All right, all right, all right, and welcome back to Cook It and Eat It here on Jim Johnston Reviews the World. And today, we've got a part two of sorts. This is a follow-up to our slow cooker apple cider recipe from a few weeks ago. So today, we are going to show you a couple different ways to use up that spent apple mash that you had left over after you got done making and straining your apple cider. So hopefully you made that apple cider. If not, go back, watch that video, link below, make that apple cider yummy, 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 and then come back and we'll show you how to use that spent apple mash, which I made a big deal about you saving and today is the reason why. Okay, so I've got a whole plethora of items laid out here. So we're going to use our spent apple mash. This is our spent leftover squeezed and strained apple mash from five pounds of apples cooked and made into uh, approximately 110 ounces of apple cider we got out of it. So we're going to show you two, two recipes for the price of none because these videos are free here on YouTube. So today I want to show you how to make apple butter. For that, we're going to use this amount, the amount is somewhat irrelevant. It's the amount of apple mash we had left minus a cup. So we're gonna use, to make our apple butter, the rest of this, two tablespoons of honey, a glass of water, and two tablespoons of our apple cider. And here is some of our apple cider, as mentioned before. And then we're going to also show you how to make a apple tartlet, a small apple pie, in our little eight inch round. And for that, you're going to use a cup of our apple mash. So we took out the apple mash, the cup for this first, and then what's left goes into the apple butter. For our apple tartlet we need one cup of apple mash one cup of rolled oats one more cup of rolled oats a cup of milk a cup of milk any kind of milk this happens to be vitamin d black pepper seasoned salt lemon juice two tablespoons of our cider cinnamon mini marshmallows and we will top it off when it's all finished with a little bit of caramel sauce i happen to like this one because it's the closest to natural and that it doesn't have two things it does not have in it that i try to avoid at all cost this does not have in it soy lecithin or palm oil those are both very very evil products and we should never buy products with them or put them in our bodies so that's about everything you need oh you need some butter water anyway that's enough talking about it let's get to cooking so as I mentioned, this is just a small, tiny little batch of apple butter just to use up, have zero waste. So we have our smallest little saucepan that's been heating up already a little bit. And we're just gonna add in what's left of our apple mash. Again, the amount of this is somewhat insignificant, but I expect it to be a little over two cups worth. Zero waste product, like I mentioned before. And then we just wanna give it a slight dusting of cinnamon. This is optional for you, but I wanted to add in just a little bit more. And now we're gonna want two tablespoons of honey. Uh, you can also split this into a tablespoon of honey and a tablespoon of maple syrup if you have real Canadian or Michigan made or Vermont or Maine made uh, maple syrup. So if you have real maple syrup, you could do a tablespoon of honey and a tablespoon of syrup, or you can do just straight up two tablespoons of syrup. We're gonna go with the honey today, and I'm just gonna eyeball it. That looks about good. Yeah, that looks good. Cup of cold water, filtered preferred. Last thing we need, this is a real simple recipe. Two tablespoons of our homemade cider. Make sure you give that a shake, a shimmy shake before you pour it out. There's one, and there's two. So this, much like our cider, is as simple as a few ingredients. The application of heat and, and time. So let's stir this to combine and then we're gonna keep this over a medium low heat just simmering. So we got everything incorporated in here and I actually put in just another splash of water depending upon how aggressive you got with squeezing this stuff when you were making your cider. You want to start out with something that looks like a very thin Thick applesauce. Applesauce. Because uh, essentially what apple butter is, is a applesauce that is sweetened slightly more. So for the small amount, just a small sauce pot, medium low heat till we start to get a simmer. You want low and slow because you don't want so much heat that you scorch it and burn it. You want to basically roast it and toast it in the pan till it reaches a color that all but looks like it's burnt. So a very dark brown, almost to a black, but we don't want to actually scorch it and burn it. So we're going to go low and slow at the heat. So this is something I suggest when you do this, put it on when you're going to be doing some other activities around your kitchen and you can give this a look every five, 10 minutes, give it a stir, get that heat right. You know, once you have everything up to heat, you got a little bit of bubble in, probably kick that heat down a little bit. So we're going to let this start doing its thing. Now right, we're going to flip over here a little bit and then we're going to get our, our oat apple tartlet started. 
All right, while our apple butter is starting to do its thing, completely adjacent to that, we're gonna start making up our apple tartlet. So this one's kind of somewhat on the same theory, although completely different, of a pound cake. In a pound cake, you use a pound of flour, a pound of sugar, a pound of butter. So this is kind of the same thing, only it's a cup. We're using a cup of oats for the crust, a cup of oats for the filling, a cup of our apple mash for the filling, a cup of milk, and then everything else is actually in smaller quantities. First thing we wanna do is we wanna get our crust going. So go ahead and turn your oven device, whatever you're using up to 375 put a rack uh, if it's a full-size oven put your rack down towards the bottom and if you're using a toaster oven if you have a big toaster oven, you can fit an 8-inch pie pan uh, just heat your oven up to 375 take your first cup of oats add to it two tablespoons of butter unsalted preferred Make with that in low about 20 seconds and then in 10 second increments after that until we get our butter melted all right when your butter is all melted take your stirring device and fold that butter into these oats to get a nice thin coating so once you've got your butter incorporated in your oats, it should look kind of like this. You're gonna take your pie pan or cake pan, whatever, whatever this technically is, and you wanna give this a thin coating of a non-stick, preferably butter-flavored spray. I personally only keep two sprays in the house, butter flavored and olive oil. Sometimes I'll switch out the olive oil for coconut oil, but that's just me. So you got your sprayed pan, go ahead and put your oats in it, get all that buttery goodness out, and then just press your oats out into the bottom of the pan. You don't need to really go up the sides any. You just want to get a nice even layer all the way around, pressed in the best you can. But it's going to be more of a crumble than a crust in that when the whole thing is done, this crust isn't necessarily going to hold completely together, but it will impart buttery goodness on our finished product. I think that about does it. Then you're going to take this, park it in that 375 degree oven, preheated oven, for 8 to 10 minutes until it just begins to brown on the top. All right, while our crust is baking slash toasting, we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna get our filling ready. This is one cup of our apple mash. To that, we're going to add a cup of oats, a cup of milk. All right, we need just a few uh, flavor augmentations. We want one teaspoon of lemon juice, two tablespoons of our homemade cider. Shaken, not stirred. One more for the chef. Mm, that's good stuff. About a tablespoon of honey. Yeah, I'm eyeballing it again. A quarter teaspoon of seasoning, seasoning salt. That's to bring that savory in, half teaspoon of cinnamon, and 10 grinds of black pepper. Toss to combine, stir to combine. All right, we've got a toasted oat butter crust now. This has uh, been out and cooled off for uh, about five minutes. You want to cool it off for five to ten minutes just to kind of let things set up, although it's not going to be a perfectly set up crust because it is just oats and butter after all. Now, when you pull this, you want to switch the temperature on your oven from 375 down to 350. And if you're using a full-size oven, go ahead and move that rack from near the bottom, uh, the middle. Here's our thoroughly mixed up filling. And it's had a little bit of time to hydrate, which is eh, nice. Nice enough. And we're just going to start to spoon this in. You want to try to lay it in without disturbing the oats on the bottom too much. And then you want to get all this in and lay it out. All right, here's our apple oat tartlet, all smoothed out and ready to go in the oven. So you're gonna go ahead and park this in a 350 degree oven for 35 minutes in total, about. Uh, you wanna go 20 minutes, just as it is now, and then at the 20 minute mark, pull it out and sprinkle a healthy or generous handful of mini marshmallows over the top. Don't completely cover it, but you know, Give it a nice amount, you know what I'm saying? And then you wanna cook it once your marshmallows are added for another 15 minutes, right about, till you see that this is brown on the top and the marshmallows are also melted down and slightly browned. All right, all right, we're back. Our apple oat tartlet is completely cooked and actually completely cooled. My apologies, uh, when it came out, I did give it a good drizzling of caramel, but I completely forgot to turn the camera on when I did that. But this has gone ahead and cooled now. We have our spatula. Our apple butter continues to go. This is a fairly slow process, but in the end, it'll be worth it even for this small little batch. You should be able to see by now it is darkened significantly. And we're gonna let it keep doing its thing for a while longer. Considerably darker brown than this. But our tartlet cake is ready. So what do you say? Cut into it, see how it came out. Look at the perfectly brown toasted marshmallows. Just gelatinous enough even after cooling. All right, so we can get this out of here. Looks like most of the oats stayed. Didn't do quite a good enough job at cutting that. Go ahead and dust those back on top. <laughs> 
Have a look see at that. I was completely unprepared to taste this. Let's give it a taste, see how it came out. So it is dense, chewy cake, apple-y, cinnamon-y, definitely caramely and creamy from the marshmallow and the milk. That's so good, I ate almost the whole piece already. So here's our apple tartlet finished, piece missing. Absolutely delicious, dense, but well, there's nothing wrong with being a little dense. I'm a little dense, it's all good. Tasty and fun. We're gonna let this apple butter keep going, and when it's pretty much there, we'll come back to show you what the end result looks like. All right, we're back, and after some amount of time, we finally have our finished apple butter. Now, this has been off and starting to cool for some time now, but if you look and see that deep, rich brown color, nice and thick, breadable, and you also may be able to see from what we started with, we are down, uh, we're down to about a third of what we started with. So this really cooks down during the process, and that's what you want. Good, deep, rich, smooth apple butter. Um, but this did, I gotta be honest, like I always am, this took about six and a half hours to get to this point over a uh, Medium low heat, sometimes a little bit higher, but then it would kind of look like it was going to score, so I'd turn it back down a little. But just to make this little bit, this is probably about a cup, a little over a cup of apple butter. It took six and a half hours, so it might not be worth it for you, but at the same time, it might be. It's a great way to use up that spent mash after you make your cider. And if you're going to be around your house, around your kitchen, doing dishes, I had a ton of dishes to catch up on. Uh, anyway, so if you're going to be around, you got the time, medium low heat. Uh, might even go a little faster over a, a gas burner. It might go a little faster if you have a small Dutch oven oven or a, a sauce pot like that instead of this this is a thin metal so it doesn't conduct the heat very well so there, there are some variables where you know I expected it would take about four hours three and a half to four hours uh, to make this and it, it took a solid six and a half but with slightly different equipment again a small Dutch oven a small cast iron sauce pot even something with heavier walls over a uh, higher quality electric burner or a gas burner you get more steady heat application you know it might take that four and a half hours again I always say this burner Burner is I like this burner but it is a little bit underpowered and it cycles on cycles off cycles on cycles off cycles on cycles off so on and so forth and so you don't necessarily get the completely even heat distribution that you want I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna get this apple butter out into a container and I'm gonna make some buttered toast and we will see how this tastes all right, we got some buttered toast here. Here's our finished apple butter. And I think we got a little over a cup, maybe as much of a cup and a half. So let's go ahead and slather some of this apple butter on here and give her a taste. Remember that dark, rich, caramelized apple type of thing you only get properly done with the application of heat and time. And I did mention this took quite a bit of time just to make this little bit. If you want to make apple butter in a larger quantity, I perfectly understand. But if you do make my cider recipe and you want a way to use up your mash, you should definitely consider making this apple butter. We're about to be very well rewarded for the time we put into this. So give that a look-see. Look at that. Beautiful. Let's see how it tastes. Mmm. Good stuff. This is our apple butter, and right off screen is what's left of our apple oat tartlet. I call it apple oat tartlet. It's kind of a version of a quote unquote fruit cake or a cake heavy in fruit and nuts, or in this case, oats. Those were our two ways you could use up that spent apple mash from our cider recipe. I really hope you enjoyed it. A little something different, kind of a part two, if you will. Thanks for watching today. And as always, if you enjoyed it, go ahead down below, give us a big thumbs up, comment, subscribe to this channel, share this with your friends and family to help us grow the world wide audience. And if you want to engage with us further, check us out on Instagram and Facebook at Jim Johnston Reviews the World, all one word like and those are our only socials besides a uh, couple other links that we have uh, to help support the channel we do not have any other social medias and i can't say we never will but i will give you a 99.9 percent .9 chance that we will never be on twitter anyway this has been apple oat tartlet and apple butter from our used up apple mash from our apple cider recipe here on cook it and eat it on jim johnston reviews the world and before we go i just want to say from me out to all of you at home be weird be free and most most importantly, be independent.